let's just start with our breath. So let's come to our breath. Inhaling and exhaling, mountain pose, maybe drawing the shoulders back down and away. Let's get to the feet apart about two fists. Draw the shoulders back and come to a nice, easy breath, inhaling and exhaling. Allowing whatever today brought you just kind of melt off. With every exhale that you take, allow your breath to bring you to this place of the present moment. And we do that with our breath. And so, as you take some inhales and exhales, slow and steady, notice where the breathing is. Notice if it's kind of here in the top of your head, behind your nose and your throat, maybe it's here in your chest. And try to work to move it towards your belly. Maybe even take one hand on your belly. And inhale, feel that belly rise and fall as you inhale and exhale. And as we slow down the breath and slow down the body, the mind may begin to pick up, may start thinking all the thoughts and the to-do lists and the things that need to have attention. And yogis, I just ask right now that you would give yourself this time without any of that in your mind. And as it comes in, allow it to come, notice what it is without judgment, and then let it go. Always coming back to the breath, over and over again. Letting go of the thoughts, letting go of the stress, letting go of the worries, the anxieties, release it all, let it go. Roll the shoulders up and back and take some shoulder rolls here to release everything out of there. And then let's reach the arms up to the sky and catch the left wrist, bring it over to the right side. Nice. Maybe a little bit more. Make your body look like a crescent moon. You can keep your feet together or hip distance apart. Uh, and then back to the center and switch sides. And then over to the other side. Find a few breaths here, lean back and breathe. Come back to center again, hands to heart. Begin with balancing pose here. We'll start with tree pose. So let's bring your knee up to your chest and either stay right here, press energy between your palms, or take tree pose traditional, foot into inner thigh. If not, the foot can come to the earth or underneath the knee or above the knee. If you'd like to hold on, you can hold on. Reach the arms up, hands in prayer. Beautiful, keep the knee pointing out. And breathe. Eye gaze is something not moving, six to 10 inches in front of you. Feel the stillness in your body right here in the beginning of our practice. Hands out to the side. and then we step down. Kitty paw your feet. You can even just like step a little bit, one and then the other, like a cat would do with their paws. Kind of feel the bottoms of your feet into the earth, bend your knees, press weight into your toes, spread your toes, and then let's find the other knee to the chest. Again, traditional tree pose, Vakshasana, foot to inner thigh, or hold on and foot down. Keep opening out the hip if you can, and finding that tree pose, hands to heart center first. Finding balance and stability in the posture, and then the hands raised to the sky. We keep opening out that knee, and breathe. Staying here focused in this moment, with this breath, with this balance, focused intention on our practice. You step down when it's appropriate to step down or stay if you can.
and then step down again. Send salutation A. Inhale, reach to the sky. And exhale, bend the knees on the way down, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen, halfway look out. And exhale, walk, step, jump, or float to plank, vinyasa, or just downward facing dog. So I'm just going to walk back to down dog for my first one. But feel free to take whatever works for you. We're meeting here in downward facing dog. Shake your head a little bit yes, and shake your head a little bit no. And press the weight back into your feet, out of your hands. Beautiful. Lengthening the spine. And taking a few breaths here. And look to your hands and either walk, step, jump, or float back to the top of your mat. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthen, look out. Exhale and fold. And then inhale, rise again with a back bend. And hands to heart center. Beautiful yogis. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, fold and melt to the earth. Inhale, lengthen the spine and look out. Maybe smile at me. Vinyasa, walk, step, jump, or float. Meeting in downward facing dog. Option to add push-ups if you like. To dial up the intensity. Option to skip those vinyasas and just find child's pose to dial that intensity down. Depending on how you're feeling and what your day brought, take a few breaths to wash it away. Maybe sigh it out. Oh. And then look to your hands, walk, step, jump, or float back to the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen again. Exhale and fold. And inhale, rise to stand, back bend, counters the forward bend, hands behind the head, heart open, and breathe. Ah. Oh. Hands down at your sides, mountain pose. Beautiful. Finding stillness in the breath. Breeze feels wonderful. I encourage you to go outside if you're not outside already. And feel the wind on your face and the sun on your skin. Feet together, knees together, legs together, one big leg, sit back, chair pose, your Kukasana. Really sink into that chair, really feel those legs. Just rounded and rooted into the earth. Exhale and fold forward. Inhale, lengthen, look out. Walk, step, jump, or float to plank. Lower down or skip it. Add push-ups or don't. And downward facing dog. The right leg lifts to the sky and open hip on hip. Elevate the left tiptoes and make some space here. And do what the body wants. You'll know if you want to flip your dog or you want to just keep doing this or even if you want to drop down to the knee. Let's bring the right foot in between the hands and spin the back heel rising up to warrior one. The hands can stay at heart center or they can reach above to the sky, pinkies twist it in, and we sink down into front knee lunge. Hands can come to heart center, and then we lean forward, finding warrior three, second balancing pose. Lifting that leg a little higher than you think you can or need to, trying to point the toes downward. Beautiful, stable in the standing leg. Hold on if you need to, and breathe. Beautiful. We're going to find that warrior one again, nice and slow. Here it is. Beautiful. The left hand, make the L, comes down to the earth, right hand to the sky for lunge twist. Any variation that feels good, listen to the body. Maybe the rolling out to the edges of the feet, maybe the dropping the hips, maybe moving around a little bit. Beautiful. Finding that motion that feels good for your body. And then coming back to that low lunge, stepping back to plank, and either child's pose, down dog, or vinyasa, your choice. Exhale back, downward facing dog, left leg to the sky, open hip on hip, elevate to the right tiptoes, find space in between the hip, knee, ankle, toes, 
Flip the dog if you flip the dog. We all meet in low lunge when you're ready. Back heel spins down. We root into the feet to rise up. Warrior one. Hands can come to heart center or reach to the sky. Your choice. We lean forward. Finding balance. Again, hold on if you need to, yogis. And there we go. Warrior three. Point the toes down. Breathe. Really lift it up a little bit higher. And then sliding back to that warrior one. The right hand stays up, reaches out, hand down to the earth for lunge twist. Any variation that feels good, let the hips sink. Roll to the edges, whatever feels good. Come back to lunge again and step back to plank. Vinyasa push-ups or downward facing dog. We'll take five push-ups here. One, two, three, four, five. Child's pose or down dog. Meet me there for a couple of breaths. And then make your way to the top of your mat, however you like to go. Walk, step, jump, or float. Offer your heart, inhale out. Exhale and fold. Sit back in chair pose, knees bend. Utkatasana, chair pose. Stand tall, mountain pose. Hands to heart center, or hands down to your sides. Coming back to the breath. Always the breath, always the breath. Sit back, chair pose again, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Walk, step, jump, or float. This is a vinyasa practice today, so we're taking lots of vinyasa. You can skip them. You don't have to take them all. You can also add whatever you'd like to add. Right foot steps through. Stay low. And then we're going to turn towards the left. Wide stance fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hammock pose. Walk your hands out. And then let your chest melt and your tail reach the sky. Any other variation here, if you like to walk your hands back, you can do that. Or maybe you want to take a little side leg lunging. So once again, really listening to the body and what it wants and what it needs. And it talks, it whispers, it yells, it screams. You know. When you're ready, hands to hips, come halfway up. Really feel the core here. And then all the way up, turn the right toes forward, bend into the right knee, warrior two. Hands come out like a T. We sink in knee over ankle, tracking the toe and the knee forward. Pump warrior one time, just once. Back to warrior two. Flip your front palm and offer out. And then reach up and back, exalted warrior. Sinking into front knee lunge. And breathe. We reach up and back, sinking into front knee lunge. We cartwheel the hands inside the right leg. This time walk out for lizard lunge. So that means that right foot walks all the way to the edge of your mat and we tap down into the back knee and sink into the hip flexor. From here you can press that leg open. You can maybe take a quad stretch back here. Perhaps you're taking an arm balance or maybe you're trying to work yourself down to either a block or a pillow or the earth onto the elbows. Really getting into that hip flexor. And continue to breathe. Always yogis coming back to the breath. And if this hurts or doesn't feel good, just skip this part and find the child's pose. And breathe. Hands come to the earth again. And sink in a little bit deeper. Stay with the posture for a couple of more breaths. 
<sighs> hip flexor and hips opening here, really melting into that space. And then let's find downward facing dog together, stepping back into downward facing dog. Beautiful. Ah, nice big long stretch spine. Shake your head, yes. The left leg comes in between your hands, and then we turn back towards the back of our mat, wide stance fold. And this time we're going to take our hands to the outside edges of our feet or to our toe bind, and we'll let our head drop in. Bend the knees as much as you need here, and again, alternate leg stretches might feel good. You're going to feel this pretty intensely in the back of the legs, which is good. That's what we're trying to do. If you have an inversion practice, you may want to take one here. And if not, we'll slowly rise to halfway. And if you're inverting, go ahead and invert. Maybe it's a headstand, a handstand, or a forearm stand, or other stand. And we'll reach back up, turning the left toes forward finding that warrior two on the left side. Beautiful. Feeling super strong and powerful in this pose. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. This posture is said to have the warrior holding 10,000 swords. So that's how powerful this posture is. Inhale, reach to the sky, stretch out the leg, and exhale right back in to warrior two. Flipping the front palm over, offering out, staying low in the knee, knee and foot, face forward, and then Reach back. Ah, uh, side body stretch. You really actually feel the rib cage open here. Beautiful. Sinking in deeper into that front knee. Really opening out the side body. And breathe. Let's go ahead and cartwheel the hands down to that lizard lunge, walking the hands down to the earth and dropping the back knee gently to top. And then walking that left leg out. Option to sink in further into the hip flexor and use the hand to open out the knee. Or maybe taking a quad stretch or working towards those elbows. So yogi's choice here. Notice what's happening in your body in this posture. It might be a lot. Perhaps you're taking an arm balance or you're just kind of twisting and moving here. Continue to come back to your breath in this posture as it does get a little bit intense. So stay with it. Really nice. And breathe. A couple more breaths here. Really feeling those hips melt open, hip flexor. Breathe, 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 breathe. Step back, plank pose. Nice, easy plank. Lower down. Let's vinyasa out of here. Up dog or cobra. And exhale, let's find child's pose, yogis, for just a little bit of time here. Any variation of child's pose that you like, or perhaps yet another inversion. Some people like to add a few of them into practice. Perhaps the head is touching the earth, forehead, third eye to the ground, or maybe the hands are stretched out, or even tucked in between your thighs. So whatever feels good is what I want you to do right now in this resting posture. And when you're ready, we're going to sit up and tuck your toes underneath. It's called diamond pose. It's pretty intense on your toes. So tuck your toes underneath and really feel the stretch in the bottom of your feet. It gets pretty intense, so breathe through it. And then when you're ready, lean back and arms to your feet, just like that, into a little squat. And then we're going to stand from here. So come on up. Nice and slow, up on the tiptoes, reach to the sky. Nice, hands to heart center, and you're at the back of your mat. Back of our mat, let's take our knee, right knee to the chest, hold on here if you need to, left hand comes across and reaches for the leg. We lift it up a little bit higher, maybe we release this hand from holding and maybe we reach back. That's enough right there. Or perhaps you reach for the outside edge of the foot and you straighten it out, dancing Shiva. And we breathe. Five, four, 
three, two, release this hand from this foot, but catch the right hand in the right foot, moving right into dancer pose from Dancing Shiva. If it needs to take a break or step down in between, do that. Keep the knee tracking under you, not out, and keep reaching forward. Breathe. Remember, you can move to a wall to hold on. For five, four, three, two, and let's release that out. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Go ahead and take some hip circles here. Feeling free in your movement, maybe shaking it out a little bit, kind of shaking off the day, whatever feels good. And then moving towards the other side. So again, if you'd like to hold on, hold on. We'll bring the left knee up to chest. The right hand comes across and pulls it up a little bit higher. Left hand can reach behind you. You can also stay at your hip. And right here could be enough for you. Or the hand can reach for the foot and kick it straight out. Or not. Stay with the posture. And stay with the breath. For five, four, three, two, release this right hand, catch the foot in the left, stay here, hold on, or lean in for dancer's pose. Finding stability, finding balance, the leg standing is strong, we're kicking back into the back leg with the breath. For five, four, three, two, and one, let it go. And let's find some more movement here. Looking really good, ladies. Really working that movement, working the balance, working the strength. All right, back of your mat again. The right knee comes to your chest. And then we kick the foot straight out. Let's pulse it for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, now lean forward, warrior three. Lots of balance today. Beautiful, that was such a nice transition. And pulse it for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, knee to chest. And tree pose, second time. A lot of legs today. Beautiful for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and step down mountain pose with some movement. <sighs> we'll vinyasa to the back of our mat or just step to the back of your mat. So you just meet me just like this or you can vinyasa from here. Maybe adding some push-ups or some more upper body here. Yogi's Choice, we'll meet the downward facing dog. We'll get there when we get there. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, downward facing dog, we meet there. Walking your hands back to your feet, feet are hip distance apart. Peace sign fingers, grip the big toe, bend the knees to reach there. Inhale, lengthen, send the booty back. Exhale, fold in a little deeper, chest to thighs, chin to chest. Find breath here as you pull just a little bit closer, chest to thighs. And breathe in and out. Beautiful. We release the toe line and slowly, really slowly roll to stand. And then let's take a back bend to counter that forward fold. This time let's do a supported back bend. Fingertips face up, heels of the hands in the low back, and we just kind of press into that. You can raise the chin tuck, or you can let the head fall back. Whatever feels right for you. And then back of your mat, mountain pose again. Looking good, yogis. Getting ready to do the other side. So the left knee comes to chest. Hands come to heart center. And we pulse for 10. Nine, don't lean back. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, lean forward and let that back leg lift up for warrior three. And then more pulsing for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, knee to chest. And tree pose again. Beautiful yogi. That's a really difficult transition as well. And lots of balance for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and nine, hold. That was a lot. Let's go ahead and relax. Move the body. I like to windshield wiper the arms a little bit here. Really nice. And I invite you now, yogis, to stand in gratitude. So maybe it's just some little things you want to think about, like just little tiny things, like this beautiful day. Or maybe it's something way bigger than that, that we have for our health, our community, our family, the internet. Maybe it's something small, like I can tie my hair up or not. Or maybe it's something big, that I have a job and my family are safe. So somewhere in between the little and the big, let's sit and or stand or wherever you're at right now with your breath and just be here in the moment with gratitude. And so notice the breath as you stand here, let the eyes come to close, allow the jaw to unclench, and just be here in the moment. Try to find stillness so maybe the feet come hip distance apart. Finding stillness here in mountain pose. And this pose by name teaches us to stand strong in our foundation. That nothing can move us or shake us. No matter what's going on around us, the mountain still stands. And so I invite you to stand here for a few moments in gratitude. with the breath and listening to the breeze. When you're ready, we come back to chair pose, Dukkatasana. Exhale and fold. Uttanasana. Inhale halfway. Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale vinyasa. Your way or no way. Or at push ups. Upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, press back downward facing dog. Right leg steps through. We cartwheel open warrior two. We've been here before. We pump the warrior one time. Step the back foot and one foot per closer. Finding triangle pose. And let's try to hover here. Maybe taking both arms to reach, or maybe just covering. Keep pressing to the big toe. And breathe for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Exalt your triangle, reach up and back. Really reach up before you reach back for 10, 9, 8, Seven, four, three, two, back to second triangle or half moon floating or not. So hand can come down to not float or hand can float off the earth. You can also reach for the foot behind you for a bind. Breathe. So second triangle or half moon. We're going to step forward for forward fold to finish the sequence. Inhale, lengthen halfway, look out. And exhale, fold again. Walk, step, jump, or float to the back of your mat. And lower down or skip it and find downward facing dog. Once again, your choice. The left foot comes through and cartwheel the hands open. Back heel spins, warrior two. Pump warrior one time, straight leg. Step the back foot one foot front in. Arms come open again. Lift up out of the rib cage and lean forward. Triangle pose, Trikonasana. Hover if you hover. 
And if not, just hold on to your thigh. Keep leaning back into this imaginary wall that's behind you. Opening this hip and the shoulder breath. One or two more breaths and then we reach back, exalt the triangle. Second triangle or half moon. So we tip it over, kick the back leg up for half moon. I'm actually going to stay in the second triangle on this side. So yogi's choice. And know your body, yogis. It's going to tell you what it needs and what it can do and what it wants. We'll finish at the top of our mat, standing mountain pose again. And hands to heart center. Beautiful. Maybe put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And take a few strong, slow, cleansing breaths here. Coming back to your side. Over and over again with our breath. Inhale, reach for the sky. And exhale, fold forward down to the earth. Inhale, lengthen, look out halfway. And then find plank pose. Right hand moves to center. Take the right knee down if you'd like for side plank. Stack or scissor the feet. Maybe lift the top leg. We breathe and count from 10. Nine, eight, seven, press the floor away, five, four, three, two, come back to plank and let's hold plank or take five to ten push-ups here. I'm just going to hold plank for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, you can also be in tabletop, three, two, one, left hand moves to center. If you're in tabletop or want to be in tabletop, take the left knee down and take this side plank variation. So yogi's choice here on the planks. Maybe you're taking the full side plank. Pressing the floor away, lifting the hips high, breathe. And back to plank again. Hold plank for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then knees down, cross your feet, have a seat on your mat. Beautiful. We're going to take a pose that is called Gomukhasana, cow face pose. So if we're sitting crisscross, this might be enough for you, but it's a hip opener. So if this is enough, stay here. Or maybe you want to take your feet together, knees apart for bound angle. This might be enough. Or perhaps you want to try the expression of a pose. So the left knee is bent, leg is bent. Really be mindful of your knee here and your other knee. And so take one of those other variations if this one doesn't really feel good for you or resonate with you. This right leg comes up and over the left, stacked. So you'll notice here, I'm going to move back. You'll notice you'll notice that this is what I call the cow face. This would be the mouth of the cow, I guess. And then the right hand comes up and reaches behind and taps your back. The left hand comes up and underneath, and maybe it reaches for the right hand, or maybe it just taps the fingertips onto the back as well. And we lean back into the top and open the eyes and breathe, fully aware. If this is too much on the shoulders, the hands come down to the toes, and we interlace the fingers in, in between each toe. So this is another variation. It feels pretty good. 
feels a little weird to have your fingers in your toes, but it does feel good. We're gonna sit up here. If your arms are still behind you, keep them. If it's too much, the hands can come down to the feet. And then we inhale, lift the chin up, and then lean forward and take the chest to the thighs. You're gonna feel the hips open here if you're in the legs position. And if not, you can be crisscrossed or you can be feet together, knees apart. And if none of that feels good, you can just be in seated forward fold, which we're gonna head to in a moment. And we breathe. Ah, beautiful. Let's lift up and give it a hug in. Ah, and then slide the feet out in front of you for seated forward fold. Curl the toes in to your body, your body. Sit up tall and then reach out like you want to hold my hands. Lean forward, lift the chin up, and you're going to start to feel the back of the legs open here. Perhaps you can reach for the toes, the ankles, or less or more. And then fold forward a little bit deeper into that posture and really feel the backs of those legs. We did a lot of work with our legs today, so let's stretch really good stretches. Breathe. Really nice. Before we move on to the other side, let's take a side twist stretch. So come on up, inhale. Bring the right leg up with you, cross it over, hug it with the left arm, and then sit up tall for a spinal twist, looking over the back shoulder. We find breath here in this twist. Ah, sitting up tall and twisting a little bit further, just as much as feels good for you. And we want to continue to look over the back. And we breathe. Beautiful. When you release, come back to seated forward fold. Notice if you can go a little bit further down this time into that Hashimotanasana seated forward fold. Maybe you take a little bit of a foot massage here. Maybe you tuck your chin to your chest and go ahead and lay right into the posture and breathe. Noticing if you have any more flexibility than maybe you had when you started. And then we lift up again, bring the left knee up and over, left foot up and over the right. And then we hug in and look behind us, sitting up really tall, using that back hand as a second spine. We press it right up against our spine and make us sit up even taller as we look over the back shoulder and find the twist. And we breathe. Always staying in the breath and in the moment that we're in, whatever the posture is. Come back to center and don't unravel the legs. If you're taking the full expression of the cow face pose, we're just gonna lean off to the right hip and bend the right knee down. And then we'll take that left leg and wrap it on top. Once again, we take the arm behind us and tap and the other arm maybe reaches for a cow face pose. We can sit up here for as long as it feels okay. You're definitely noticing this in your hips and if you're not taking this, you're taking feet together, knees apart or just seated and crossed or you can take some other posture. Remember also you have options to slide your fingers in between your toes. We sit up tall, eyes wide open, and breathe. And then forward fold right down onto those legs and noticing the hips really starting to talk to you a little bit more as we lean into the posture, beautiful. Let's unwind and hold on to those legs. Ah, and then slowly lower down onto your back. Feet are hip distance apart. Finishing postures here. So go ahead and lay down on your back. And one or two back bends, either half bridge or full wheel. Hands can interlace and slide underneath you so you're on the outside edges of your arm. And lift your hips up high. Or maybe you take a full wheel back bend if that's in your practice. We're just gonna do one, so let's hold it for 10, not your breath, the pose. So keep breathing for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, release. And take the knees to the right and open the arms like a T, look to the left. Stay here or come up for some crunches for your obliques, as many as you'd like. And so we'll do the other side, and then I invite you to take some time to finish your practice. What does that mean? Well, maybe you want to take another back bend, or maybe you want to take a plow or shoulder stand, 
or maybe you want to work some more crunches, or maybe you're practicing your throw or headstand. Maybe you want to work on abs or take some more push-ups. Or maybe you're done, Yogi, and you just want to lay down and find your final posture, Shavasana. So that's your choice. Whatever works for you is what I invite you to go ahead and do right now. And so we wait for you to finish up whatever the body's asking for. And when you're ready, go ahead and find a reclining position, whether it's on your back or on your right or left side. Close your eyes, relax all the muscles of your face, and start to relax all the muscles in your body. And come to a nice normal breath. So finishing up whatever it was that you were working on. And come to your breath. Some of us may be desperately trying to recreate the life we once had, but fear, pain, and desperation won't attract the answer we're seeking. Desperation attracts desperation. Pain attracts pain, and so the spiral goes. Yes, loss hurts, and sometimes life hurts too, but loss cannot be negotiated. Becoming obsessed with putting pieces back in place is an understandable reaction, but it will never work. You see, because yesterday cannot be superimposed on today. We need to continue to step further. We may face losses along the way, but we need to come back to the lessons of today because they're different from the lessons of yesterday and they're just as valuable. We face many losses along our way in life. People will disappear from our lives. We may lose a career, job, money, friendships, something else we value. We can lose our dreams too. But looking for a quick replacement as a way to avoid feeling pain won't work. Because we'll miss the lesson. You see, because before we can go on yogis, we must feel whatever it is we're feeling, whatever it is we've lost, whatever it is that's changed, because losses demand acceptance. Eventually, life will send you new people, new jobs, new hopes, and new dreams, and cherish all the times to grow and to learn, and cherish what you're learning right now. So yogis, the beautiful part about being online is you're able to stay and rest with your breath for as long as you need. And I invite you to start to really sink in and settle down into this final posture. And notice if any thoughts start to arise and gently nudge them along their way. Notice the breath as it enters the body, let it come to its natural rhythm. Rest here in the moment of your breath, moment by moment, and breath by breath. I invite you to stay as long as you'd like here in this place of rest, to renew yourself, soul, your spirit, your body, your mind, to refresh, to start anew. Until our paths cross again, I wish you peace, love, and light, inviting you to stay right where you are. Namaste.